Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Sarah Short. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Entomology at Ohio State, and I'm also a member of the Infectious Diseases Institute. I'm glad you're here today. Today we're going to talk about ticks and about tick-borne disease. So let's get started. So ticks can transmit pathogens that cause disease. They can transmit viruses, bacteria, and parasites, all of which can cause disease in humans. One tick-borne disease that is particularly problematic in North America is Lyme disease. You may have heard of it as it's becoming more and more common in Ohio and across the country. Lyme is caused by bacteria in the genus Borrelia, and you can see a picture of these bacteria here. And it's transmitted by ticks in the genus Ixodes, and you can see a picture of ticks from this genus here. So Lyme disease is really relevant right now because it is expanding. So we're seeing more and more cases year after year, and we're seeing those cases spread into new places in the country. In particular, we've seen an expansion in the state of Ohio recently. So in the past six years or so, we've seen a doubling uh, in the number of cases in the state these are confirmed cases, and the CDC estimates that the actual number of cases may be more than 10 times the number shown here. So it's something that all Ohioans should be aware of and should be taking some precautionary measures to protect themselves. Let's talk a bit about the ticks that transmit the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. So the ticks that transmit Lyme disease in this part of the country are the black-legged tick, or more commonly known as the deer tick. So here you can see the adult female deer tick and the adult male deer tick. And over here is the nymphal stage of the tick, which is also capable of transmitting the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. Ticks are arachnids, not insects. You can tell this because ticks in the adult and nymphal stages have eight legs unlike insects, which generally only have six legs. So ticks are actually more closely related to spiders than they are to insects. Ticks undergo multiple stages in their life cycle. They start off as eggs, shown here, and then they hatch into larvae, which are very, very tiny. The larvae molt into nymphs, and the nymphs molt into adults. So there are four life stages, egg, larva, nymph, and adult. All life stages except the eggs feed on blood. Ticks need to take a blood meal, either from humans or animals, in order to molt to the next life stage. It's their only source of food and they need it in order to survive and to grow. One very important thing to keep in mind with ticks is just how small they are. This is important so that you can be aware of what you're looking for if you want to prevent tick bites. So an adult tick that causes Lyme disease, shown here, is about the size of a sesame seed. So that's pretty small. But the nymphal ticks, which can also transmit Lyme disease, remember, are about the size of a poppy seed. So these are very, very small little guys. To give you an idea of just how small nymphal ticks are, here's a picture that the CDC tweeted out a couple years ago to demonstrate just how similar in size nymphal ticks are to poppy seeds. So they took five nymphal ticks and they put them on top of a poppy seed muffin and asked if people could find the ticks. And of course the internet blew up because people were grossed out and amazed at just how small these ticks are but they're actually so small that it can be challenging to feel them climbing or crawling on you. Um, and it makes it a lot easier for them to be able to find a place to bite and to feed um, on a human for a few days and then drop off. So the nymphal stage of the tick uh, is actually the stage that's most likely to transmit the bacteria that causes Lyme disease to humans. So any guesses why that might be? I'll give you a second to think about it. So there's a couple reasons. Um, one is 
because of how small these ticks are. So like we talked about, they're very, very small. So it's very easy for people to miss them on their bodies. And for that reason, people are more likely um, to get bitten by uh, ticks of this stage and to um, for the tick to stay on them for a long enough period of time to transmit the bacteria that causes Lyme. Another reason is that nymphal ticks tend to be most active when humans are most active. So nymphs are out and looking for a host to feed on um, between April and throughout much of the summer. And that is coincidentally when people are also out and are most likely to contact ticks. Once a tick is on our body, it crawls around looking for a place to bite and to take a blood meal. And in order to feed on us, ticks have to cut into our skin and insert their mouth parts. Their mouth parts are contained in this part of their body right here called a capitulum. And that's shown with this red box. This is a zoomed in image of the capitulum from the top on this side and from underneath over here. So these right here are called chelicera or chelicerae for uh, plural. And the tick actually uses these to cut our skin. Then they insert this very intimidating looking mouth part here called a, a hypostome into our skin. The hypostome gets anchored in there and then the tick takes a blood meal. This can take a few days for a nymph tick or up to a week for an adult stage tick. These mouth parts, the chelicerae and the hypostome often get left behind after removing a tick and you should know that that's okay. There's no reason to, or there's no need to remove the mouth parts after you've removed the tick if they happen to remain uh, stuck in your skin. So here's a picture of what a tick looks like while it's blood feeding. So the blood goes into their digestive tract shown here in red. And while the tick is sucking blood, it's doing another thing as well. It's actually salivating. So these are its salivary glands right here. And it salivates at the same time. So it's spitting into us while it's taking a blood meal. They do this for lots of different reasons. They do it in order to anchor them into our skin. They actually make a cement with their saliva that's critical for keeping them in our skin. They also do it to reduce inflammation at the bite site so that we're less likely to notice that they're biting us. But really importantly, in the context of Lyme disease, the saliva that the tick is spitting into us is actually what contains the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. So that is how we get Lyme disease, from the saliva that the tick is spitting into our bodies. So what are some steps that you can take to help protect yourself from Lyme disease? So the most important thing that you can do is to prevent getting a tick bite. So in order to prevent tick bites, um, you can cover your tracks, T-R-A-C-S. So the first thing you wanna do is to tuck in your clothing. So tuck your shirt into your pants and tuck your pants into your socks. The goal here is to pre prevent or to pr uh, create a physical barrier so that the ticks have a harder time um, getting to your skin. Then you also want to make sure that you apply repellent. So you can apply permethrin to your clothing or purchase permethrin treated clothing. DEET or other repellents can be applied to the skin as well as clothing. You can visit this link shown here at the bottom of the page um, to read about the many different repellent options and to find a repellent that's right for you. And we wanna remind you to remember to always follow the instructions on the label. You also want to avoid wooded and bushy areas with high grass. This is because ticks will often climb to the top of tall grass and wait for um, a person or a deer or another animal to walk by and then they will grab onto that um, animal. So avoiding contact with tall grass can be really helpful in preventing um, picking up ticks. When you're done outside, you wanna check your body for ticks after you've spent time outdoors. So do a tick check. Check all of the places where um, your clothing meets your skin. So around the neckline of your shirt, around the waistline of your pants, 
Um, check your groin and your hairline. Those are two places that um, ticks really like to, um, uh, to take blood meals. And then you also might want to consider showering within a couple hours after you've come in from outside. And the goal here is to remove any ticks that haven't attached yet, um, but that might be too small for you to see easily and remove yourself, especially those nymphal ticks that we talked about. So what do you do if you get a tick bite? So the most important thing if you find a tick on your body is to remove the tick as soon as possible. This is because uh, it actually takes some time for the bacteria that causes Lyme disease to be transferred to your body. So removing the ticks in a timely fashion can go a long way uh, toward preventing infection. So to remove a tick, you wanna find the pointiest tweezers you could find, and then grab the tick as close to the skin as possible and pull directly away from your skin with steady, even pressure without twisting. Then you wanna clean the place where the tick was biting you with soap and water or rubbing alcohol, and this is to just remove any bacteria that may have been left behind. Finally, you wanna save the tick. You could either put it in a plastic baggie or you could put it in some hand sanitizer, um, which will serve to remove the tick or uh, to kill the tick and to preserve it as well. Then you wanna record what day you got the tick bite and keep an eye out for any symptoms. And of course, if you're concerned, um, you should contact your physician. So here is an excellent video provided by Dr. Glenn Needham in which he's removing a nymphal tick from his skin. Up slow, steady. So you can see that he's grasping the tick with pointy tweezers and then pulling straight upward with steady, even pressure. And you can actually see right here um, the mouth parts of the tick. So the mouth parts in this case came out with the tick when it was removed and you can clearly see them there in the image. You can also get an appreciation of just how small these nymphal ticks are from this video. So for more information about ticks and tick-borne disease, uh, please visit the OSU Bite site. That's u.osu.edu slash bite and click on the tick tab. On that website, there are lots of useful links for things like where to send a tick for identification or how to identify a tick. Um, there's also links for where to send a tick for testing and more information about ticks and tick-borne disease in Ohio. Thank you so much for joining me today. Remember, be tick smart and stay tick safe. Bye.